Sure. Does an artist, as an individual, transcendent consciousness, give the work meaning, mm -hmm. or does the transpersonal language and structure of the work give it its meaning? Mm -hmm. uh, I, the answer I would like to give, by which I get much less confidence as goes by, is that the artist uses the transpersonal structures of meaning mm -hmm. to communicate a personal meaning. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and couldn't do it otherwise. Sure. Um, if you said, I'm going to invent some words because there are no words to explain what I want to say. Mm. And um, I invent colourless green ideas sleep furiously. Right. You know, that sums up what I want to say. Uh, well, well, what did you mean by colourless? Sure. What are you going to invent another word? <laughs> yeah. And that way you can't say anything. Mm -hmm. um, if you're going to say anything, you have to use the transpersonal structures of the language. Right. Yeah. Um, there is a twist on this, by the way, which I, one of my few contributions to originality, which I'll come to in a moment. But you use the transpersonal structures of the language to communicate your meaning, mm -hmm. with one very interesting twist, um, which, which I get from Wittgenstein. The structures of the language are not closed. Right. That was what Derrida went beyond Barthes. I think mm -hmm. Barthes often, but he didn't match because he was too wild. But there's always a sense in structuralism of the structures of the language being closed. And you know, you just use them and you operate them, and then someone can read them off by some sort of automatic process. Um, what I then thought um, dawned on me very strongly is this how creative we are with the structures of the language. Mm -hmm. And my favourite example of this um, is the following. Um, as children, we learn the word vivid mm -hmm. with respect to colours. Right. And little children love vivid lipsticks and sure. vivid colours. One day, you say to someone, somebody says, my example of my students was the Tom Lehrer song, soon you'll be sliding down the razor blade of life. Isn't that horrible, sliding down the razor blade? It's advice to students using leaving university, soon you'll be sliding down the razor blade of life. And now I say, isn't that a vivid term of phrase? Mm -hmm. And I've taken a word from one region of the language, colour, and I've applied it in another region of the language, words. Sure. Yeah? And you understood me immediately. Mm -hmm. I mean, how is that possible? Sure. And that is how the structures are transcended. Yes. And I think we forget that that's necessary to language. Mm -hmm. And that is the difference between a phrase book and learning language. Right. You know, you have to be able to respond creatively. It's like learning to drive, by the way. When, you, when you're taught to drive, the instructor says, change gear now. Mm -hmm. If you only ever learn change gear at the third lamp post up, mm -hmm. you never learn to drive. You have to learn creatively to apply the structures. So the art, what the artists, what the great artists do, although they forget we do it all the while, mm -hmm. um, you know, we have to learn our language and we're in constantly new situations where we um, apply it. Which is why Croce, who I've just given to you, says we are all artists. Right. So every day we reapply our language in new contexts. But what the artist does is take the transpersonal structures and speaks through them, mm -hmm. but then transcends them. Right. Uh, and that's where we talk about creativity. Uh, but it's the artist who speaks. Sure. Even though it's a frag, I now think the artist is a fragmented soul. Right, right. Um, but that fragmented soul speaks. Sure, sure. And if you say, what is the meaning, mm -hmm. you're going to have to say, what are the meanings? Right, right, right. And, right. Uh, uh, yeah. But I still have this can little Cartesian niggle in the end. There's something that holds it all together. Yes, yes. And that's me. <laughs> but I don't know. I have to work on that. Thank you. Last question then, Colin. Mm -hmm. Um, intentists are a collection of artists, poets and musicians who believe that all meaning is the imperfect outworking of intention. Yes. What are your thoughts on this movement? I think that's absolutely right. Um, can I just borrow my crochet for a moment? Oh, okay. Some so. wanted to read. It might actually be in that book, but um, uh, I think that's absolutely right. The bit I love about it, and when you wrote to me, uh, when Gary wrote to me, you sent me, and I looked on the website, mm -hmm. and I saw that, and I thought, Oh Lord, you know, I've been saying that for years and somebody's now actually believed me. 
<laughs> although you, hadn't, you didn't know me when you said it. Yes. Um, but there is a passage in Croce where he talks about the creative process. And, um, oh Lord, it's about, it's about valuation. Right. Um, and I bet now I've got my glasses as well. I can read, but I'm not going to slide. He says, um, Uh, this is, uh, uh, this is the, the, uh, the aesthetic process. Individual A seeks an expression for the impression he feels, or of which he has a presentiment but which he has not yet expressed. So you say, you know, as an artist I have a sort of, I want to do this, and I have an intention to work this out, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure what it is yet. Right. right? Um, now you try different words and phrases, mm -hmm. or when you try different colours, or you try different tones, right? And you fiddle around. Sure. Um, I think people forget how often artists fiddle around. Yes. You know, probably going to fiddle with this. Um, he seeks the different words or phrases which might give him the expression he seeks. I forgive the he, uh, but which must be there. You know, they must be there. I'm going to get there. Mm -hmm. um, I always think of Hodgkin saying, I spent 11 years on that painting, you know, <laughs> and I've got it. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, but, um, so you try combination M, and you reject it as inadequate. You try combination N, and you can't see, or you can't see clearly. I mean, that's the imperfect bit, you see. Mm -hmm. The expression still eludes them. Vain attempts, you now draw near, you now draw away, and of a sudden you find the expression you sought. And it almost seems as if it forms itself spontaneously in you. And you say, there is light. Now, what I wanted to ask you about that was, um, I can see, um, the way you put it again was how? Um, we believe that all meaning is the imperfect outworking of intention. Yeah. If the imperfect means, you know, you try this, you try this, you never quite get there, mm. um, I think that's absolutely right. If it suggests you never actually bring it off, mm -hmm. um, I think sometimes they do. Right. I think what you might be groping for, though, is that when you brought it off, there's still a, a surplus mm -hmm. uh, which can be worked through by other people. Mm -hmm. you know, and it's, um, uh, the work is never finished, done, over and complete. Sure, sure. Yeah. But I think sometimes I wanted to say, um, Keats is owed to autumn. Um, certain bits of Mozart, you know, they're just perfect. Right. You don't want to add to it, take away from them. Um, it's true that there's a surplus there that I might hear that piece of Mozart at a particularly crucial time of my life. Mm -hmm. And whenever I, I hear it again, that time of my life comes back. Right. So that the artist can never, um, in that sense, say, there it is, sure. it's finished, yes. you know, take it or leave it. Mm -hmm. now, that's not in your right to do. Mm -hmm. um, but if anybody understands you, they've got to understand you. Sure, sure. That's, that's why you need to be there. Yes, that's yes. why I'm so sympathetic to what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. All strength to your elbow and all that. You know. yes. But thank you very much, yeah, Colin. Sure. Um, nice to meet yes, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.